to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at the 1984 range, part of the 1984 range. Actually very nearly 84, this one is 1183, so November 1983 and I've also got a brochure here from actually January 84 so it'd be interesting to see if there is any difference in the uh, video recorder range between 1984 and late 83. And then to finish off, we have this, the Ferguson TV video and audio range from 1984. So, let's take a look first at the one from November 83. So this is one of those nice fold-out affairs. And hopefully I will get everything into one picture with luck. So, into one frame. Yes, we can. So we got the 3V32, the entry level 3V35, the not so entry level 3V36, and uh, still making a big thing about stereo on these two models. Long play on this particular model. And let's flip over to the other side. We have the camera range. So we got the little portable VHS uh, VHS compact there. Also, we've got a 3V37, this little rather cute uh, video colour monitor, which is very likely, let's zoom in on it because it is rather nice looking, very likely I would, at a guess, say that that is probably a rebadged JVC of some description. You can also get some special effect filters as well, just the thing for the budding amateur photographer. We also have for some reason this uh, stereo source thing here so simultaneous broadcast of stereo VHF radio and television picture that was what the radio option was on the 3V31s and 3V32s so we could get that through stereo television or standard TV with headphones or standard TV with hi-fi which I think this is going back to the old simulcast broadcast before you actually had um, uh, stereo signal in the television audio signal you had simulcast signals um, broadcasts where you would get um, an FM radio broadcast of the audio in stereo and obviously the television and mono audio were broadcasted over the standard UHF television television signal but you'd have a stereo signal over VHF so if you were so equipped you could listen to it in stereo which was a nice little feature of the time. Fast forward into January of 84 we have pretty much the same story to be honest with you. So with the addition of the 3V38 which was you know I've never ever seen a 3V38 before so the 3V38 is like the 3V35, but it has, I don't actually know what it has, ah, yes, no remote, so it doesn't look like it has a remote, so that was your new absolute bottom of the range, the 3V38, which is interesting. Uh, you then have the... 3V35 for confusing model numbers, 3V36 and top of the range was still the 3V32. So the model numbers were getting a little bit confusing but you can sort of see that they are beginning to phase out, uh, probably phasing out the 35 and 36 with the 38 becoming the new entry level. Portable camera wise nothing much has changed. In fact, this is pretty much the same as the other brochures. So nothing much has changed between January and November. Apart from the addition of the 3V38, which was uh, an unusual choice of model number. So, let's go on to the main event, which is this. And we're going to do a bit of a zoom in so we get a nice picture zoomed in of this and we're going to start off with obviously the introduction 
and are we using the set yes we're still using the best picture of all time the best sound all round and we're starting off with our base 14 inch color portables I think these are TX90s we've also got TX90s here with the remote control so these are nice little sets either available in trendy white or the more sober grey white was very a very big thing in the 80s um, especially when it looked nice and new like this it really did look quite slick moving up the range to the other 14 inch portables I think these were older TX9 sets uh, one with remote by the looks of it I'm not sure if they had yes I think these two had remotes these two were 16 inch portables I'm not sure if this was a TX9 or TX90, I'm not 100% certain. Um, you could have a 12, 24 volt battery adapter on both of those. You could also have the battery adapter for these ones as well. So I'm not quite sure why they have two different lines of portables which are effectively doing exactly the same job. That does confuse me. These were newer and these were older so yeah not quite sure what's going on there I'm sure there was some kind of rationale behind it at the time then it looks like the 18 inch portable has actually been dropped or the 18 inch movable or transportable or whatever it was called has been dropped from the range and the biggest portable screen size that they do is the 16 inch so I can certainly see why you would have a 16 inch here but I'm not sure where you'd have a 14 inch of 16 inch version so yeah a little bit confused with that still got the same line of 20 inch sets uh, both non-remote and remote the non-remote 37350 the remote being the 37351 moving up in the range we got the 22 inch models um, I would guess that these two are probably TX9s and probably the ones with remotes I don't know if these would be TX9s or TX10s to be honest with you not 100% certain on that I would think probably TX9s and when you come up to the 26 inch that's obviously going to be TX10 but that's your entry level uh, TX10 set the 22, 26 inch tube so the A66540X doesn't mention here anything about the 30AX inline tube. Um, obviously, it's not no longer a new thing, and it's sort of pretty much expected these days. Well, those days that you would have that in there. Fast forwarded on to the Teletext side of things, we've got obviously pretty similar to the 83 brochure. talking about the range of teletext although it is actually now focusing on teletext for parents and teletext for children and yep there we are teletext for special groups of people so we're still focusing on uh, special groups of people sort of emphasizing that teletext really is for everybody or was for everybody it was the uh, the internet of the 80s and uh, yeah if you had a teletext TV it really was quite a useful resource especially if you wanted to check the weather the latest news wanted to see what's on TV it was brilliant I like teletext and uh, it's a shame that it's gone so the entry levels we had some 16 inch portables with teletext we also had the 20 inch teletext set here it looks like a 20 inch uh, super sound but only with one speaker uh, this would have probably used the 580x mullard tube which was uh, certainly a very good tube for the day and um, if this is anything like the 20 inch super sound I think that the whole chassis would be isolated so the whole chassis would be uh, the whole TX9 chassis would be isolated that means you could actually run potential RGB um, RGB AV through the teletext uh, the teletext adapter potentially or certainly the ports that the teletext adapter is using to connect to the TX9 board that would be on models which have got the TDA chip so the Mark 2 and Mark 3 TX9s I don't think the early Firester ones will support it uh, 
And then we've got the top of the line, the 22 and 26 inch, both TX10s. 26 inch being the real top of the line item. You can see as we run through um, the 80s how the sort of appearances have changed. Now sort of going for less wood, more grey plastic, which sort of looked quite fashionable for the time. And then we move on to our Ferguson TX stereo televisions. So at the, I wouldn't even call it bottom of the range to be honest, we got the 37493. I used to own one of these sets, and uh, a good friend of mine now owns that very set, uh, complete with that stand. And uh, yeah, very good set. It's, we've recently set it up for, um, recently set up the colour and grayscale properly, and it's produced some very good results. It's 580x tube, has a lot of life left in it, it's barely been used. We think that the set itself was one of those um, best room sets, so certainly in the old days you used to have a front room which was never used except for special visits from the vicar or special family dignitaries. And uh, you know, only used for real sort of special occasions. So that set was probably in that room, primer place, special occasions, probably only used to watch the Queen, Queen's speech or something at Christmas. or. Uh, something else of that nature. TX10 with the 22 inch, um, you can see here that this has got the 3V32 under it. This one's got 3V31 which wasn't available in 84, although this one was. So probably a more accurate uh, deck to put under here would have been the 3V36 which would have been available in conjunction with that television. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a few 31s uh, hanging around as well. And that's it as regards the stereo televisions. Um, if you wanted uh, a 26 inch version of that, you had to go rental, which was uh, an unusual choice, but it forced people into the rental route, either via radio rentals, multi broadcast, DER, etc. Unchanged since seemingly forever, we got the 20 and 24 inch monochrome sets and also these 12 and 14 inch monochrome portables. And then we got the technical specifications for the various television sets. Also got uh, TX optional accessories, we've got the 12 volt battery, we've got the headphone and loudspeaker socket, the audio outlet, the video outlet, inlet and audio socket. So you could actually specify um, if you had those particular models there, you could actually specify your AV inputs. And that hi-fi amplifier loudspeaker, which we saw in the last uh, one of the earlier brochures. Coming on to the Video C recorder and camera, v Video Star C or v VHS C camera and recorder. Nothing much has changed there from 83. And here we are. Bottom of the range, the new bottom of the range is 3V38. Basically, it's 3V35 without the remote. So, I would guess you could probably raid uh, the remote interface from that and chuck it into there. Um, these do come up, both of these actually come up for sale. I had a 3V35 up until recently. Um, the 38s, you do see them from time to time. Good entry level machine, JVC based, picture quality okay for a VHS deck, you know, much better than uh, its entry level would actually sort of have you believe. Being a JVC, they were built, even the cheap ones were built to a fairly high standard. Coming on to the stereo range, we've got the 3V36 as your entry level stereo model. And your top of the range for early 84 was the 3V32, which is still doing sterling service even though it is technically a much older, well, much older, a couple of years older design than the 36 and actually a much bigger deck than the 35 and 36. And then we've got the range of accessories there, obviously a nice selection of cassettes, VHSC cassettes in various lengths, and then we come on to the audio range. And we've still got the Stereo Master Hi-Fi systems, as you can see here. So 
they're quite nice. I think those, rather than stack units, are actually sort of all-in-one designs. But, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing and nice, nice enough with storage for records and cassettes. Then we've got the entry-level semi-portable units, built-in speakers on this particular model, ideal for a bedroom, with everything that you would have needed at the time, tape, tuner and record deck. This one here, a little bit better because it's got the, um, the external speakers and a few additional features. And then we come up to the Studio 90 and 300D, which I think are actually unchanged from 83. So, yeah, still available and still rather nice, actually. Then, for some reason, this actually appeared at the beginning of the audio section in the last one, but you could still get that stereo record player, if you so desired, if you just needed a record player and nothing else. Similar range of clock radios. Portable radios. Then on to the personal stereo. So the Ferguson Escort, which was a nice little range of personal stereos. Similar accessories to 83. A nice happy lady in some kind of jumpsuit thing there with her personal stereo. Then we've got the portable cassette recorder. And we've got this little radio cassette recorder here as well. The free T26. Then we got uh, these two here, and also the one that I liked from the last time, the last brochure, the three T22 with twin cassettes. An exciting mains slash battery cassette recorder with long, medium, and stereo VHF radio with AFC. Four and a half watts per channel. LEDs for tuning and record level. Twin cassette units for tape to tape recording and editing. Damped cassette eject, metal tape facility, four speakers, sockets for extension speakers, five pinned in, which is probably for the input, and it gives us the measurements. 11 and 3 eighths of an inch high, so 290 millimeters high. 19 and a quarter inches wide, or 488 millimeters wide and four and a half inches or 115 millimeters deep. So it's quite a chunky thing actually. And finally, this little one here, which was the 3T25. Again, confusing model numbers. I think that was the higher range one. The 3T25 was a portable. Um, it had what did it have? Did it have any inputs or outputs? No, it wasn't actually as high featured as the last one, although it's still not really a bad deck, to be honest. You know, not bad at all. Then we got the, yeah, country of origins, Japan for the 28 and 25, Korea for the 22, and Taiwan for the 20. Also Hong Kong on one of the clock radios, Taiwan for one of the clock radios, and a mixture of ta Taiwan and Hong Kong for a number of the portable radios as well, so on the specification sheet there. And we've got our audio, audio technical specifications there, which we'll just leave on. Move to this one. And there we go. So next time we're going to be taking a look at uh, another brochure from 84 which I am rather excited to look at because we get into the realms of where the Ferguson range started to sort of become quite exciting and actually was competing with um, higher end Sony products. This one here with the fabled professional series. Behold the professional series television set there in all its splendour. And this one is dated 684. So we've gone from oh, February 84 for that one to June 84. And that will be the one that we'll be looking at in the next video. But for now, thank you very much for watching. 
hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Take care and see you soon.